Hi, everyone. Hi. Hi, everyone, indeed. Hi, Hi teacher. Hello there. Hi, teacher. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening, Good evening and welcome. So, Thank you. here we are, guys. It's uh, Monday, uh, yeah. and apparently it's going to be our last Monday together. Uh, but, yeah, well, for a while, at least, because you never know, right? Um, but what is the goal for this Monday? One thing I have for sure, and it is that we're going to continue talking about sleeping, okay? That is the main <laughs> idea. We have to continue talking about sleeping. We're not going to talk about sleeping disorders or anything like that. We're only going to be talking about <laughs> how well, you know, you can sleep. So that's going to be part of it. Um, we're also going to be talking about the classes we use, uh, well, to state reasons or conditions. Those are key when we are talking about um English classes, because of course we are humans and we always want to um, put excuse on our mistakes. So yeah, that's something that uh, is going to be really a part of the lesson for tonight as well. And uh, for this evening, I want you guys to remember, I don't know what time of your life, but on a specific time of your life, because the question for tonight is not going to be about the weekend surprise uh it's not going to be about the weekend i want to know about what has been in your life what has been your favorite tv commercial okay tv commercials are everywhere we see them every day we um have to face mm -hmm. them even in youtube like i mean i'm i'm talking about generalization you know we're talking about <laughs> um tv youtube even tiktok instagram anything your favorite TV, um, we're going to refer to it as TV because most commercials are designed for TV. Uh, however, sometimes we get exposed to them on our phones, but initially they were not necessarily, you know, designed for them. Because if I tell you your favorite ad, the problem with that would be that ads, it's too general because an ad can be just a poster, a simple image. So an ad is not going to cut it. Tonight, what's going to cut it is going to be your favorite TV commercial. So, tell me, can you guys remember a commercial that has been surprising or has been, um, what, um, cool or something you remember? For example, in my case, it's not necessarily a TV commercial. It's more like a TV promotion. It's the one for summer, the one they have in Canal 6. I think we talked about this before. Um, the song that goes, El sol está que quema, los bikinis se dejan ver. So that's... Semana Santa. Yeah, that's for uh, Semana Santa, uh -huh, for Holy Week. So that is one thing that has actually marked my life. Like, some, I don't I don't watch TV that much, to be honest. Um, like in the last, what, the last three, four years, I don't really watch TV. I only watch TV when I want to watch a sports. Um, I don't really do the news on tv my news i normally get them from twitter uh but yeah i am you know a different generation if you want to call it that uh but uh oh okay so there we go um so uh i don't do a lot of um a lot of tv but when i do watch tv or when i listen to my dad watching tv i get excited whenever it's the time you know for holly week when we get to hear that song in canal says so, what is one for you? What is a special TV commercial you have watched or you have um, seen in your life? And I think we're going to start tonight by getting to know that information from um, Jenny. Do you remember any TV commercial, Jenny, that has marked your life? Um, it can be something. It can be. It can be a bad experience as well. It doesn't have to be a nice experience. Okay, it can be something that maybe disturb you or something like that but tell us jenny do you have any experience like that hey hey there i don't remember but i like the 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 commercial that bank agricola bank banco agricola mm -hmm. because shows something about the the the, the country about the good manners of the of the person oh. okay yes. 
I think I remember that one. That was like five years ago. A little bit more, probably. But yeah, fue cuando cambiaron de imagen, parece. Cuando dejaron de ser así como el banco agrícola normal y pasaron a la, a la forma que tienen ahora. Creo que en ese momento fue. Um, so, yeah. Yes, yeah. Sandra, uh, that question you just sent, well, in my case, I didn't feel anything at all. I'm scared. <laughs> yeah, I didn't feel anything. I mean, I mean, I was at that time I was at a at a at a restaurant and no one in the restaurant felt anything. No <gasps> one. Like I don't know what happened, but no one actually felt anything. Um I didn't see any alarm or anything in the in the in the mall where I was at but at that time. However, my girlfriend, she was in San Salvador and she called me as soon as it happened. She was like, "Are you okay? Is everything okay?" Cuz I mean, I didn't know. I didn't feel anything so that's I, that's why i didn't you know i didn't call her or anything but she was calling me and asking me like if, if i was okay and i was like <laughs> because of what and she was the earthquake and i was like uh -huh. there was yeah. no earthquake yeah yeah okay yeah, but, shake it. yeah hopefully you guys all of you are are doing great and uh mm -hmm. i hope none of you were in a tricky situation when that happened yes <laughs> okay but uh jenny so the one you were mentioning i think as i said i think i remember that one And actually, as you were speaking, I it came to my mind that I have also two other TV commercials or TV spots. We can also refer to them as TV spots um, that are not maybe the like that big. You know, they didn't necessarily change my life, but they did change my taste in music because I remember. I don't know if any of you guys has ever seen the X Games on ESPN. But it's like all the extreme sports, you know, and um, uh, it was around 2013, 20, yeah, 2013, 2014, when I listened to this song. It was a bangerang by a Skrillex. He's, he's a DJ. Um, he he like he makes music on this um, genre called dubstep. So it's a very heavy thing. But I remember watching that commercial, and I was like, I want, to, I love the song. I want to listen to more of that. And um, yeah, that was my first year in the university. And I will listen to Skrillex or to Dubstep almost all the time. So that really influenced me in terms of like my musical taste. So yeah, TV has that magic, you know, sometimes um, there is even a topic. Now that I remember in the TOEFL, there is a topic about that, about how music sometimes can be more important in movies than the movie itself. So for some people, music is like like one of the things that makes the movie. And there is one example in recent um, movie history, and it's in Guardians of the Galaxy, this movie from Marvel. Um, but yeah, they have amazing music. And actually the movie is recognized because of the soundtrack. So sometimes, you know, music can be more important than the information that the the movie or the tv spot in that case is trying to transmit and the other example that i have is one taken from nagiona Nar nagio or national geographic um it's one that includes the song i'm yours by by it was not bruno mars jason mars by jason jason ras sorry jason ras so i'm yours i don't know if you guys have heard that song before Creo que es así, es más de las que ustedes tal vez han escuchado. Una que es bien calmada, que va... ¿Tú? ¿Tú? No, no, bueno, al rato, al rato se las mando porque no la puedo poner aquí. Um, but yeah, that... Sorry, Janet. I'm yours. Uh -huh. Yes. Well, you do done done me and you bet I felt it. I tried to be chill, but just so hard that I melted. I fell right through the cracks. Now I'm trying to get back. So yeah, that one. Uh, <laughs> so I remember the, 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 the dad TV spot. It was about nature, but it included that song. And uh, there was one point where there was a polar bear. And I remember watching the Polar Bear and also listening to the song. It got me in the mood. I, I almost got to crying. And it was almost about the same time, about the same time when I listened to Skrillex. So both are very different genres. Um, but yeah, it was actually, you know, that those TV spots, the ones that got me into listening to those different kinds of music. So 
TV can sometimes influence us. Now, next person, let's see. Uh, let's hear from Walter. Do you have any experience like that? Have you ever had a TV spot or a TV commercial that has been influential? Yeah, there is. There are, there are one. For example, a uh, guy, no, Tipo Cookies. The, 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 the ads or commercial Tipo Cookies. Yes. Yeah, I remember a, a song. Uh -huh. uh, sounds like uh, uh, Tengo que intentar Todo tipo de cosas Volveré a intentarlo I don't know if it's like that mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I remember in that time uh, I, 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 I say, oh my God How is possible a boy Try to best someone to come back again Oh my God, I think a lot of things But when I when I went, uh, I became to adult. I understand that the, the lyrics. Yeah, I understand that it happens, happens. But yeah, a commercial is mark my life. <laughs> and do you like Tipo cookies? Yeah, I like it. Yeah, right. Uh, even though I eat when I I eat uh, ice cream, I like it with ice cream. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Great, yeah. great. Yeah, yeah, they are tasty. I also like yeah. table cookies a lot. All right. Um, how about the case of um, Janet? Have you ever had an experience like that, Janet, where a TV commercial has marked your life? Um, yes. Um, for many years, uh, from my youngest to now, mm -hmm. Um, I have had a uh, sick of the uh, actual music because I I feel that all this uh, only the lyrics only trait of uh, sex or drugs or many crazy things. Mm -hmm. So I I um. I lost uh, the la the 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 taste the, the taste yeah from the music mm -hmm. but in the quarantine when I saw for first time uh, the, um, the 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 um, anuncio <laughs> yeah <laughs> from from um, Samsung uh, Galaxy in collab with BTS. Oh. Uh -huh. I I knew this band and it it mark an um, an end and and come on, and come back to the music. Oh. Because I knew and uh, uh, a new a new uh, type of music mm -hmm. with many different lyrics with positive, positive uh, uh, inspiration, um, with empowered from youngest and older people. And I love it <laughs> from, si from, from, from this time. And what's the, name, what's the name of the song? Cause I don't remember it. Dynamite. Oh, was it Dynamite? Yeah. Oh, okay. Nice. Yeah, I don't remember. I remember my girlfriend and my sister being so excited about the phone, but I don't remember the song. I don't remember what song it was, <laughs> uh, but I do remember the excitement, um, honestly. But yeah, I, I mean, it happens. It happens a lot to a lot of people. I have a friend. She's a really good friend. And uh, well, like a year ago, kind of like a year ago, she will always tell my sister mostly. Uh, en español, porque le gustan esos chinitos a ustedes. And uh, <laughs> now she is just crazy about them. The other day she was crying because Hobby is going to the to the military service. Um, so yeah. yeah, now she understands. We're crying. Now she understands the feeling. Uh, so it's like you know, I don't make fun of her because, as I said, I mean, I'm not a huge fan. I'm a fan, but I'm not like like huge. You know, like I have some some things from them. Like, I don't have my wallet on me right now, but in my wallet, I even have a picture of uh, RM. Um, oh, so yeah. my bias. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he is my bias. Um, I have 
I have bought like 20 photo cards from him. I mean, I don't have wow. them. I just store them with my in my girlfriend's album. So we have an album together. Uh, if there is anything that comes out like by Koya, I will get it. Um, so yeah, wow. it's like I I like to have you know things, but I don't have them myself. I uh, myself, sorry, I have yeah. them in her house because she has like a specific place where she stores everything. Um, but yeah, it's like um, I am a fan, but I'm not a huge fan. But I remember me telling you're a baby friend, army. <laughs> kinda, yeah, kinda. Like I like to listen to them. Sometimes I surprise myself, you know, when I don't I don't want to listen to any any music, any general music. I'm like, I'll go to BTS now. Um, so yeah, it's like it happens, you know. It's not like I will listen to them every day, but I listen to them quite often. Um something that surprises my girlfriend is when I sing the songs. Like sometimes uh she doesn't know that I know the songs. Mostly when RM <laughs> sings, of course, because it's in English. Um, so yeah, but I do get where you're coming from because it is. I mean, they are a change. They have been a change in the world. So yeah. pretty understandable. Okay. I good. need to. Sorry, I need to know your your girlfriend and your and your sister. Oh my God! If you will enter, we are my sister of, of of purple uh, blood. If you ever enter my girlfriend's room. Like, I mean, I have been a big part of it because for a time I painted her room pink uh -oh. and I even draw the, the, the army and also the BTS logos on the wall. Yeah. I don't have pictures of that, but I, I did that. Uh, it was like two years ago. It was because of Persona. It has been basically my favorite album yet. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I painted her, 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 um, her, what her room pink. And yeah, I have helped, I have really helped her get many things. Like we have, I think it's two army bombs and almost wow. every single, um, three army bombs. Okay. So three army bombs, Yellows. uh, all the albums, at least one version of all the albums and, uh, what at least 19 cars? RJs. No, it's basically all, all PCs by, by Jin. And almost all PCs by RM. Almost. So, yeah, yeah, we have a lot. I mean, the other day we were making a count and we have a spend or invest around $4,000. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a journey. It's a journey. Okay. Uh, thank you for that, Janet. Now, let's see if we can hear from who? Uh, Jancy. How about you, Jancy? Do you have an, uh, an experience? where a TV commercial has changed part of you or has influenced you in any way? Yes, and the commercial that I love to see when I was seven years, something like that, uh, years old, was the, um, the, for the Mirasol marketing. Oh. <laughs> yes, the, the Pedro Luntal. That's so cool. <laughs> oh, really? I, that yeah. one, I don't know. How did it go? Um, they sing um, song, 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 song. Um, cuando el Pedro Luntado llegó, muchos, I don't know, pero um, it was a, a, how do you say, comic? Yeah. Yes. Funny. Comic. Comic, ah, yes, but um, was the the bread the the bread was um, delicious for for margarina? I don't know margarina. How do you say margarina? Uh, it would be butter. Butter. Uh -huh. Okay. Butter. Some is people it? may refer to it as margarine because it's a bit different because butter is uh supposed to be. Butter better you know for for you but butter is the the safest way to go like if you want to be understood go for butter sí decía cuando pedro luntado llegó mucho eh, los niños felices están porque el, sus panes están untados con margarina mirasol algo así o sea que ustedes <ríe> tenían su versión la su versión de la otra la ahora es eh, lo de la de los huevos pero no me acuerdo cómo va que cosa que no quiere huevos pero que con margarina sí no me acuerdo cómo es Ah, ya, 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 cabal, esa de huevos como siempre. No, ya no queremos. Ponles mirasol, por favor. Diga esto. Delicious. Delicious. O sea, eso, 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 es, eso es diferente, es la nueva. ¿va? 
Pero, o sea que Mirasol siempre se, la, se las ha rifado con la musiquita. No tenía competencia de... They don't have competition, yes. En el pueblo de Pacho. Only... Uh, exactly. Porque viven aburridos de comerse solo el pan. <risa> la sana se lo puede todo <risa> Yo me puedo unos dos más Que son más chistosos todavía Ok, so share with us Share with us, Sandra yeah. It's about a, a, a medicine For diarrhea Called controlin Controlin uh -huh. I... It's very old, you know oh, Okay, because that yeah. one I have never heard of And what they say in Spanish, el cipote come mangos, ni la cáscara botó. Y después de la mangueada, las carreras empezó. Pero su madre previsora, su diarrea controló con controlín. ¡Oh! oh, oh. La graba. ¡Ey! Esto que... Ahí lo, ahí lo agarran para la radio de una vez. Aquí es ese KL, la vamos a escuchar. ¡Qué madre! Una. ¡Qué, qué, qué madre! Ya, yeah, lo tenía escrito, uh, lo acaba de revisar en todo el seguro. Y, of course, and another one is, ven y sube al reino del pájaro y la nube. Oh, yes. Oh. Yes, 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 yes. Teleférico. Yes. 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 Yeah, because is yeah. there a teleférico or was there a teleférico? Yes, of course. I was like this when I was up, you know. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> okay, because yeah, I never heard of that. The electricity was, uh, go on, se fue, how do you say? Oh, went go, off. Yes, and you oh. get uh, atrapado. Okay, so you got... And, <laughs> I was stuck. Up. And, yes. Uh, so it's, okay. Uh, was terrible. The, the gondola yeah. was stuck. So things things you don't know about the country, you see, because I didn't know there was a teleférico. Honestly, I thought. I mean, the closest teleférico that I have seen, I suppose, was in in Colombia. I didn't know that there was one here. But cool, nice. Oh, I like cool. heights, and I I never heard of that. But yeah, okay. So one more. Let's hear from one more um commercial, and this one. Is going to come from Jacqueline because you have been quiet today. So tell us, is has there ever been a commercial that has been influential or has been funny or important to you? Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Yes, teacher. When I was uh, younger, mm -hmm. I really enjoyed Coca Cola's Christmas ads because I felt they were made to connect with people. Mm -hmm. But today, uh, I have no experience with any, just uh, with, with, with this Coca-Cola Christmas at mm -hmm. Yes Teach. Yeah, I remember that too. I remember that they will use the polar bears and uh, how, like, for example, Coca-Cola was center in the in the family reunion or in the family yes. dinner yeah and there was a like a full journey they were like i mean they were very creative now um the thing is that i think that before commercials were more creative you know because yes. uh, for example the things that sandra mentioned like you don't listen to any of that anymore like there is no there's, there's no poetic aspect to the commercials nowadays it's just you know just give the information and that's it but back in the day they tried to make it a prose they tried to make it interesting for for the ones who were listening um but yeah it's you know times changing maybe just people are more simplistic nowadays we try to make things more easier uh or easier but yeah i think teacher uh, this commercial had uh vibes family family vibes i think yeah. Mm -hmm. They yes. had family vibes. Nowadays, it's just commercial vibes. Yes, because, money. Yeah, it's only about, it's all about the money. Just Cause, sell, teacher. Yeah, because for example, many things are like that. You know, with, uh, as time goes by, for example, uh, what like ten years ago, was there Facebook? Yeah, there was Facebook ten years ago. Like ten years ago, the Facebook uh logo 
was different in phones, if you remember. But let's not go 10 years. Let's go six years ago. So six years ago, when you had a phone, the Facebook logo, the Google Chrome logo, every single logo was different. It was on 3D. It was more like popping, more attractive. And nowadays it's just plain. And, and I mean, they don't really change it at all. I remember, for example, that uh, it was what? It was 20, 2015. 2015 was, or 2016, was one of the most active years in terms of logos, like, you know, changing the logos of, of different apps because that's when Instagram decided to change the logo. And then like all ad apps became crazy or all the social media networks became crazy about that, about changing them, about giving them new designs. And nowadays it's just like, they are as they are. Like as they have become so common, they don't change anything anymore. And it's just plain. So yeah, many things I think go like that, you know, with uh, technology, we become more simple of people. But it is what it is. I mean, we cannot change that fact, probably. What we do have the power to change is, you know, the power of understanding where we're going to place each of these words. So here we have, if you remember last uh, uh, Thursday, we were talking about these phrases, because all of them are phrases that we use to refer to sleeping. <clears throat> now, each of them has like a power in terms of when it happens when you're sleeping for example if you remember i told you that when you were talking about be fast asleep it is very similar to when you say be sound asleep and that means that you are deeply asleep so if you were to place them on a chart like this one i would say that this is going to be the example being fast asleep is basically the same or i mean it will land on the same spot be fast asleep as we will have um, be sound asleep. Be sound asleep. Now, what other two phrases from all these phrases will complete or one phrase, let's say, yes, only one. What other phrase is going to be the one that you guys will place here on sleeping deeply? ¿Cuál de todas las demás frases puede ser considerada como una frase que se refiera a dormir profundamente? Profundamente. Mm -hmm. Which one do you think? Read them all. Sleep, We're gonna like, read... sleep like a log. Sleep like a log. That is the one. Very good. Sleep like a log. All right. So now we're going to go back to this one. Having trouble sleeping. Having trouble sleeping. Which one do you think? is going to fall here, having trouble sleeping. We have uh, be wide awake, drift off, feel drowsy, have a sleepless night, not off, is, uh, take a power nap, toss and turn. Be wide, be wide awake. awake. Be wide okay, awake. be wide awake. Toss and turn. Toss and turn. And uh, we need one more. Which one do you think it will be? Have a sleepless night. Have a sleepless night. Very good. Have a sleepless night. Sí, pasar una noche sin dormir. Now, in terms of falling asleep, remember, falling asleep is basically when you are just going out. So what would be the ones that you will place in terms of falling asleep? We still have drift off, Feel drowsy, uh, not off, and um, take a power nap. So which ones do you think will fall here in falling asleep? Falling asleep is feel drowsy. Okay, feel drowsy. Yes, that happens when we are basically about to go down. Oh, so yes. <laughs> feel drowsy. <laughs> okay, now. Which one would you say? Aquí solamente vamos a poner dos. Which one would you say? Drift off or not off? ¿Cuál sería la que ustedes coloquen en el falling asleep? Drift, drift off. off. Not drift off. Not off. Drift off. En este caso sería not off. 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 Not off.
Sí, uh -huh. not, not of. of. Not of. Porque les decía uh -huh. el otro día, son similares. All of you. Son lo mismo. Porque not of es cuando estoy cabeceando, ¿verdad? ¿eh? Not of. En yeah. cambio, el drift off es cuando de verdad, o sea, dos minutos, un minuto que sea, pero me dormí. Sí, o sea, no estoy not enough, porque not enough es ya, 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 ya. Bueno, y aquí está. Hoy le voy a decir para que no le vayan a llegar con el chambre. Este, ¿cómo estaba Walter el miércoles pasado? ¿Ah? ¿De verdad? Ah, que vean que no me río. Que no me río. ¿Verdad, Walter? El miércoles pasado, ahí está. Y es que yo me fijé que el pobre, como a eso de las 8 y 20, está así. Sí. Sí. Si han visto la película de, de, de Cars, han visto a ah, como el pobre Mac va... sí. así estaba este Walter el otro día. Entonces, eso es el not off, es cuando ya me estoy quedando dormido. En cambio, dormir por un periodo corto de tiempo, ahí sería, ¿verdad? El drift off. Sí, drift off. Ok, ¿cuál otra sería entonces, aparte de drift off en esta, en esta parte? En sleeping a short time. Take a power nap. Take a power nap. Take a power nap. Good. When you take a power nap. Have you ever had that practice, guys? Have you ever tried to take a power nap? Or do you usually take power naps? After lunch. Okay. Always, Always yes. after lunch? Yes. And how do you feel after the power nap? Do you feel more productive or do you feel yeah. like... Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. For five minutes. Better. Okay. Now, how long do you think a power nap is healthy to, to, to last? Is it healthy that it lasts five minutes? Or how long do you consider for it to be still a power nap? 15 to ten. 20 minutes, I think. 10, ten, ten, ten minutes. 10, okay. If so you have many minutes. time, you need to sleep two or <laughs> hours. <laughs> ya lo había yo que alguien iba a decir. Una power nap para mí es toda la tarde. Este. <laughs> Oh, así ya me siento con todo para la noche. No. <laughs> like a power nap, a power nap, according to people who are experiencing that, and there will be, I mean, I will mention specific cases and I will be dealing with Spanish people um, because they do have this practice in Spain. They say that a power nap has to last on average 12 to 15 minutes. Okay, so if you go beyond that, that mark, you might fall into the um, the deep asleep, you know, the deep asleep section of sleeping. Because as, as we know, we have light sleeping and deep sleeping and awake time. Because I didn't know that. And uh, I don't know if you guys have ever used, you know, smartwatches um, no. when you sleep. But I have one. And uh, I remember that I, I, I wore it for like a week. And it was measuring my sleep um what you call it my sleep patterns and um i didn't know that there are sections of the night when you are awake like you don't realize it but you are awake or at least your body is functioning like if it's awake um because yeah it's like regular you know in a, in, a, in a normal person or in a normal resting um time it is normal that for section of the time you're going to actually be awake Now, we also have the one that we, or at least scientists refer to as mm -hmm. light sleep. And that is what we're trying to get to when we take a power nap. Because if you go to the section of deep sleeping, as soon as you get there, you have to spend at least 15 minutes or 15 more minutes in, in deep sleeping. And then at least five more minutes in light sleeping so that the nap works. So if you add up all that, it will take around 40 minutes for a good nap, you know, in terms of uh, the nap lasting more than 15 minutes. So it's either 15 or 40. Si, o sea, si se pasan de 15 minutos, es el problema que podemos caer en la sección ya de, eh, de sueño profundo. Entonces, si, si caemos ahí, eh, si se despiertan ustedes así abruptamente después de estar en la sección de sueño profundo, Uh, we're getting into, into trouble zone. Sí, porque ahí es cuando ya nos quedamos con sueño, ¿verdad? Ya no es una power nap, sino que ya es básicamente una draining nap. O sea, como una, una siesta, pero que nos, que nos en lugar de, de darnos energía, nos quita la energía, ¿sí? nos drena de la energía. So, be careful with that. Sí, tengan cuidado. Aunque creo que igual, para lo, lo de Yancy le funciona. O sea, si, si se toma el nap pasado de 40 minutos, funciona también Yancy. So no problem. Sí. Muy bien. 
So these are basically um, things that happen, you know, phrases that we can use about falling asleep or when we are going to fall asleep. Now, all the things that we, that we can talk about and that can happen are going to be, well, the clauses is stating reason and conditions. Now, and uh, hear me out on this one. When we are providing reason, it is important that we remember that, um, well, the way we explain things is going to have a lot to do with the message that we are transmitting. So be careful when you're using all of these ways of explaining or giving reasons, you know. Now, the thing that mentions here conditions, it is also important and uh, it is similar to the use of conditionals because what we do here is that we are presenting an hypothetical situation. It's something that will happen if something else happens. We're not going to be using, of course, we're not going to be using the if clause or not necessarily, but it's very similar. In some cases, of course, we are because here, for example, we have the if clause right here. But it's not in every case that you present the condition that you're going to have to use if. We're going to see now about those, okay? Now, the first one is the use of even if. Even if. This is a condition, okay? Even if introduces a condition that does not influence, influence the main class. This one then is basically like if you're talking about dependent and independent classes. Okay, so even if, in this case, would be the dependent clause. It is not like that, okay, because we're not going to understand them like that, because these are, these are not regular uh, sentences. In regular compound sentences, you do need both sections. These ones are more like extra information, okay, but this extra information is the one we're, that we're going to refer to as the dependent clause. So we have the first one. I sometimes lie awake at night. So that is just the common, okay? That's the, the common, it can stand on its own and it's okay like that. Now, if you want to introduce a condition, here we go. Even if I'm really tired. So that's something that happens even under that condition, okay? Even if. Now, can you guys, can you guys think of another example where you use even if? Go ahead and think of all the examples because, of course, we're going to be giving examples to all of them. But first, to even if. I sometimes lie away at night, even if I'm really tired. What is something that you can say with a condition like that? Can you think of something? It sure could be, for example, it's easy to me to hit the sack even if I drink two or three cups of coffee after it before that okay it's easy for me to hit the sack even if i drink lots of coffee we're gonna go with lots of coffee lots of coffee uh beforehand so there we go it is easy for me, or it's easy for me to, um, to sorry, hit. It's easy for me to hit the sack, even if I, I drink lots of coffee beforehand. Good, very good. That is a very good example. So it's easy for me to hit the sack, even if I drink lots of coffee beforehand. So it's a long comment, yes, but it makes sense. So here we have the first one. It's easy for me to hit the sack. Esa es la frase, ¿verdad? Es fácil para mí dormirme. Y ahora la condición, incluso si, even if, I drink lots of coffee beforehand. Entonces esto lo vamos a entender como incluso si, okay? Even if. All right, good, very good. So we have the first one. Then we go to the next one. This one is for a reason, okay? A cause or a reason. Considering that, that's the one, considering that. Introduces causes and reasons that explain the main class. Now here, we're going to go with this one that we have decided to refer to as extra information. But in this occasion, we're talking about extra information that is relevant. Because without this extra information, our main class will not make full sense. Now, what do we mean by that? Well, we have the example right here. 
I'm lucky I can get by on six hour of, hours of sleep. Okay, so there we have it. We can say, yes, that phrase makes sense. I'm lucky I can get by on six hours of sleep. But without the explanation of the considering that, uh, we're not going to understand what this person is trying to refer to. Here, what he or she is trying to say is that compared to the average, okay, compared to the, to the cumulus of people, he or she sleeps at least two hours less than the rest of people. Like more, most regular people need way more sleep than he does or she does. I'm lucky I can get on, I can get by on six hours of sleep, considering that most people need eight. Okay, so when you talk about considering that, it's like, for example, when the when you so, when you do something special or when you have something special or something that is different from the rest. Let's say, for example, um, I went to the movies with my friends. Considering that, sorry, 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 sorry. no, I, I I find it hard to go to the movies with my friends. Considering that, I don't even have a job. Okay, so that's something that it makes me different, makes me special from them. Um, so yeah, it's something that happens pretty often. Okay, so considering that, we're going to use it when we are referring to that, to um, to reasons or to explanations that will set us apart to some extent from the rest. And also when we are going to introduce extra information about the main class that is relevant for this main class. Now, what about the example? Can you guys think of an example for this? For considering that. Mm -hmm. um, it is difficult for me to find any job. Um, in spite of, well, they don't, considering that I have <laughs> enough experience, you know, but because of my age, nobody wants to give me any, any job. Okay, so it's difficult for me to find a new job. Mm -hmm. Considering that I do I have, have the experience. The experience. Mm -hmm. Now, we can leave it at that because if, for example, if you add the information about the, about the, the age, do defeat the purpose. Okay, if we add mm -hmm. more information, we're throwing more negative information to the mm -hmm. um to the first section. And okay. sometimes the, the same thing that happened with the thing that we were referring to uh before, the um ah se me olvidó el tema como era subtracted when we decided to subtract the 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 the, the subject from one section of the sentence. Mm -hmm. So uh, what we're trying to avoid is to sound too redundant. The same as we did with the modifiers. We did not include yeah. as many modifiers in a sentence because we are not trying to be too redundant. If we add more and more and more info, what we're going to do is that probably we can saturate, you know, the sentence mm -hmm. and we are yes. going to have too much information in the sentence. You are right. Mm -hmm. So it's difficult for me to find a new job considering that I do have the experience. So it's like, why? Why am I not getting a new job? Like I have the experience, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. good. Very good. Now we go to the next one. The next one is uh, as long as. As long as. That is one that is pretty cool. Now this one is for conditions. As long as introduces a condition on which the main class depends. Okay. Entonces, as long as es quizás la condition más preferida o la, la más utilizada por los padres. Sí. O sea, considering that. Um, okay, so as, as long as, uh, as I was saying, is, is one of the most, like, the, the ones used by parents, porque es la que se utiliza muy a menudo para poder introducir también condiciones que obligan, por decir así, a la persona a hacer algo. Sí, esas son condiciones en las cuales ustedes se ven 
eh, en esa encrucijada, ¿verdad? Que deben hacer algo para poder obtener el beneficio, digamos, que se está ofreciendo. So, as long as we have the example. I can manage on five hours of sleep as long as I take a nap during the day. Okay, so this example is completely away from what I was mentioning as, as, as you know, the use for the parents, but it also makes sense. I can manage on five hours of sleep. So this person says that, you know, he or she can do it, but there is an exception. Yeah, he or she needs to have, or I mean, we don't say it like that. Okay, he or she doesn't say it like that. When we use as long as, we don't say need. So no necesitamos incluir el need, pero está básicamente inmerso en, en la frase, ¿verdad? En el as long as casi que se entiende que es una necesidad, que es un, casi un must, ¿sí? casi un deber eh, que la otra parte debe estar. Por ejemplo, I can manage on five hours of sleep as long as I can take a nap during the day. How can we set an example on the, on the topic that I was referring to before? If we say that parents love to use um, this structure, okay. well, you can go to the party, uh, for example, for us alone. As long as, as, okay, you can go to the party as long as um, make a, no do the 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 how do you say ordenar la casa the uh, okay, okay do chores. Okay. Yo creí yeah. que estábamos bien yendo por show. el mismo camino porque yo estaba, yo yeah. justo se estaba pensando, o sea, you can go to the party as long as you do the dishes, for example. Okay. Yeah, you can go to the party as long as you do the dishes. Uh, or maybe you can go to the party as long as, um, what? You don't go to another house. Okay, so that's another condition, you know. So you can go to the party or you can, um, you can have a driver's license as long as you don't drive faster than 60 miles. Okay, so that's another one. It's a different topic, but it's following the same structure. Um, you can, what? What else can parents provide us? Yeah, you can I listen. Love, See? Um, <clears throat> I love listening music as long to take a shower. Okay, you can listen to music as long as you take a shower. Or yeah. I was also going through the idea of music. I was like, uh, you can listen to music as long as it's not too loud. So it's, it's you know, you go following that route. Uh, entonces, básicamente, as long as we're going to use it when there is an obligation. There is something else that you have to do. So we're going to place an example here. ¿Cuál ejemplo va a ser el que se quede aquí guardado? Mm, can we get it from... From Julia. So Julia, can you think of an example with this? As long as. Sorry, yeah. could you please repeat the question? Yeah, can we get an example with the a structure for as long as? O sea, yeah, que, yeah. Que, el que introduce una necesidad o como una condición para que algo se logre. Por ejemplo, lo que decíamos antes, ¿verdad? Que en el caso de los padres, Podrían decirnos, you can listen to music as long as it's not too loud. O sea, puedes escuchar música tanto como no sea muy ruidosa. Or you can go to the party as long as you do the dishes. O sea, puedes ir a la fiesta en tanto como hagas algo en la casa. En ese caso específico, pues lavar los trastes. So, uh, an example following that structure, Julia. Okay. Uh... I will go to the party as long as you go with me. Ah, very good one. I will go to the party as long as you go with me. This one we can use it, we can apply it when we are referring to situations. Um, oh, si se fijan, bueno, aquí está, ¿verdad? Una de esas cosas que pasa a veces, la computadora nos da la opción de también colocarle if. Porque pues es una condición. Estamos introduciendo una condición. Entonces, en este caso, te dice, bueno, voy a ir a la fiesta, ¿sí? En tanto como vengas conmigo. Entonces, eh, introduce la condición de la obligación que, debe, que tiene la otra persona. Uh, now, important here, for example, the context can be that we're going to the party, and in this party, I don't know people, 
So I don't want to go alone. I want someone else to come along with me. And maybe you are the person who knows, you know, the people in the party. So, of course, I'll go. Yes, but you have to come with. Teacher, yes. uh, as long as it's like uh, in Spanish, mientras. Mientras, sí. But when you say mientras, in Spanish could be while or meanwhile. I don't know. Eso sería cuando estamos hablando de tiempo. Uh -huh. es, o sea, se utilizaría el while cuando nos estemos refiriendo a una situación que tenga que ver con el tiempo. En cambio, en situaciones como estas, que son condiciones, ¿sí? o algo eh, que es más bien en el espacio, más que en el tiempo, ahí sí, ¿verdad? Se podría utilizar o entender como, eh, como el as long as. ¿sí? O sea, por ejemplo, eh... Digamos, el, el otro mientras, el, el while podría ser, I was, what? I was on my way to San Salvador while the earthquake took place. Sí, o sea, estaba eh, camino a San Salvador mientras el, eh, el temblor o el, el, el terremoto tomó lugar. Entonces, así sí, ¿verdad? O sea, algo que sucedió mientras but, yo estaba... But my tiempo. example, I think is, is better to use while when I say uh, I love to listen to music while yeah. take a shower. Uh -huh. it yes. It's better. It's things that you're doing at the same time. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. But for when example, you say uh, when use a condition, you need obligation after for, that. Uh, for example, you can use as long as if you're like, if you're saying, I don't have a good shower, or may I have a good shower as long as I listen to music. Eso es una condición. O sea que disfruto mi ducha o me, o me baño con ganas, ¿sí? Mientras, o por eso es que yo uso, utilizo para no equivocarnos el en tanto como, a pesar que suene tan raro, pero el en tanto como, sí, en tanto como es escuchando buena música. Entonces, Got it. Yeah, that's a condition. Okay. And okay. when you use while, it's with time, like something that takes place at the same time that the other thing is happening. But as long as it's used when uh, something cannot happen if the other thing doesn't happen. Por eso es que es una condición completa, ¿verdad? Las I got it. I got okay, it. great. Very good. Now we go with unless. Unless. Este es, para entenderlo directamente en español, a menos. Sí, a menos que unless. So, unless introduces something that must happen in order to avoid consequences. Entonces, estamos hablando acerca de algo que debe pasar para poder evitar consecuencias. That's when we're going to be using unless. So here we go. Unless I get a good night, a good night's sleep. See, unless, unless I get a good night's sleep, I can easily fall asleep at school, at work, even while driving. Entonces significa, a menos que pueda tener una buena noche eh, para dormir, una buena noche de sueño, Puedo fácilmente quedarme dormido en la escuela, en el trabajo, e incluso mientras manejo, mientras conduzco. Sí, so unless. Let's say, um, unless, esta es una muy común de los profes. Unless you start working harder on your assignments, you are not going to pass this subject. Okay, so unless... You start uh, working harder on your assignments. You will not pass this subject. Okay, so there we have it. That's a that's one example using unless. See, unless the H is one of the bastante, bastante comunes, o sea, es uno de esos um, de esas condiciones que se usa muy, muy a menudo entonces eh, es importante recordar, ¿verdad? que esta principalmente lo que hace es como dar una advertencia o sea, cuando utilizamos unless estamos haciendo algo como eso, casi que dando una advertencia, que a menos que hagas esto, lo otro va a pasar ¿sí? entonces, o sea es básicamente una advertencia o o, o eh, algo que, se, que, que debe pasar para evitar una consecuencia y que usualmente es una consecuencia negativa normalmente son así, a veces pueden haber consecuencias positivas pero eh, no, ¿verdad? o sea, por ejemplo, ¿cómo puede ser una consecuencia positiva? 
que una chica les diga, si ustedes están queriendo verdad enamorarla, les diga, unless you stop work, uh, unless you stop treating me like this, like this, I will fall in love with you. Si a menos que dejes de tratarme de esta forma, pues me voy a enamorar de ti. Eso podría ser una consecuencia positiva, pero son contadas, o sea, son muy pocas las que se ven así. La mayoría de las consecuencias que se ven son con un contexto negativo. Ok, then we have in case or just in case. ¿Sí? In case or just in case. ¿Se puede decir in case siempre? Sí. El just in case, el just en sí lo que hace es que agrega como mayor fuerza a la hora de decir in case. Now, what does it do? In case introduces a, an undesirable circumstance that needs to be taken into account. Okay, so it, it introduces an undesirable circumstance that needs to be taken into account. What is an example of this? I always set two alarm clocks in case one of them doesn't go off. Sí, estamos hablando acerca de eh, básicamente medidas que tomamos ¿sí? para evitar ¿verdad? circunstancias poco deseadas por ejemplo you can say um, I always carry uy, I always or I normally I normally carry a power bank a power bank with in case a power bank lo vamos a dar nomás a power bank in case I run out of battery o también lo podemos decir esta es una cosa una, una, una forma muy común de decirlo ahora I run out of juice sí o sea es algo muy así va muy chic muy actual I run out of juice. Sí, me quedé sin jugo. O sea, se refiere, claro, a la carga del teléfono. También se puede utilizar para su propia energía. O sea, en el caso que ustedes son, qué sé yo, de ese tipo de personas activas y que todo el tiempo están moviéndose y así, y luego de la nada ya como que empiezan a caer, ya pueden decir, ah, I, I run out of juice. Sí, o sea, me quedé sin carga. Así se va a entender. So, I normally carry a power bank in case I run out of juice. Ese sería un muy buen ejemplo para esto, ¿verdad? Entonces, que normalmente yo pues tengo conmigo un almacenador de carga, un, un, power, un power bank, eh, in case I run out of juice, en caso que me quede sin batería, ¿sí? O si no, podemos decir el just in case, ¿sí? Just in case se va a entender como eh, en caso siempre, pero en inglés sería como si dijésemos solo en caso, ¿sí? Pero por eso es que eh, al español casi no se traduce el utilizar el just in case porque en inglés sí es cierto que da un mayor énfasis pero en español no tiene esa misma función ¿verdad? sino que en español al utilizar ese just así traducido de, de forma directa lo vamos a entender como si fuese una situación aislada o sea que lo, lo tengo solo si eso pasa, entonces es como aislando ¿verdad? la situación, no en forma general, por eso mismo es que en el español no se traduciría, no sería aconsejable traducir ese just, porque si no se van a tener, van a tener un dolor de cabeza, créanme. Yo ya, o sea, tengo ya un par de años que también trabajo en algunas cosas de traductor y los just son una, un caso complejo, o sea, porque en español ellos no, no cumplen la misma función que en inglés. En inglés sí, o sea, es como que eh, el decir just give me a second, ese sí, ¿verdad? O sea, solo dame un segundo, pero... Igual, en español casi no, no es tan común que se utilice ese solo dame un segundo, sino dame un segundo. Es como más directo. Entonces, sí. en, en cambio en inglés la función que cumple es mucho más importante, ¿verdad? El utilizar el just. Sí. Um, igual, eh, si, no, si no es así, en español es más exagerado. Por ejemplo, si alguien me pregunta, how many do you need? Y yo digo, just two. Sí, solo dos. En español no se traduce solo dos, sino que eh, el solo se deja solo para uno. Entonces diríamos solamente dos. Así que por eso es que el just, o sea, como les digo, es un, es un caso. O sea, es un, es un caso traducir just. Porque si ustedes dicen solo, o sea, la misma palabra casi que nos deja saber que estamos hablando de algo individual. 
Así que por lo tanto no puedo yo decir solo, solo cuatro, solo cinco, sino que debería decir solamente cuatro, solamente cinco, ¿verdad? Así que por eso los just, como les digo, cuidadito con ellos. Bueno, la siguiente. Only if, only if it introduces a condition that must be uh, met for the main class to be true. Okay, solo si. Now the example. I wake up early. Um, I only wake up early if I have something to be, uh, somewhere to be in the morning. Esta entonces se utiliza para hablar acerca de situaciones que solo son posibles, ¿sí? Solo son posibles básicamente bajo esta condición. O sea que le, el, la, 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 la parte importante de la oración va a ser posible solo si se conoce o si se llega más bien a el punto que está mencionando esta condición. ¿Sí? ¿Cuál podría ser un ejemplo de esto? Vamos a ver. Ahora sí les toca a ustedes. So, an example you guys may think of using only if. Only if. It's very similar to the use of as long as. Very similar. The only thing here is that as long as is together and only if is separated. Only if you're perseverant, you will be uh, coming through your dreams. Okay. Only if you persevere, you will make your dreams come true. All right. That is a good one. That is a good one. However, um, en este caso, bueno, esta está bien, sí, pero la idea también es eh, eh, usarla cuando podemos separar el only if. Entonces yo puedo decir, you will only, sí, y ahí vamos a usar lo diferente. You will only make your dreams, make your dreams, make your dreams come, dreams come true. If you persevere. Entonces, así se puede también separar. You will only make your dreams come true, come true if you persevere. Aquí pareciese ser una de esas ocasiones en las que... Oh, no, perdón, perdón. Si el if nunca tiene, tiene coma en el centro. Pero pareciese acá que se necesita una coma, pero no. Sí, no hay necesidad. You will only make your dreams come true if you persevere. Sí, solamente vas a hacer que tus sueños se vuelvan realidad si perseveras. Pero bueno, lastimosamente los sueños que se van a hacer realidad ahorita son los que tienen ustedes, porque ya les veo que están cansados. Eh, bueno, mañana tune in, because tomorrow we have the last one. Extraño que vamos a terminar en martes, la verdad que va a ser bien raro, but tomorrow we have the last class of this module. Teacher. And, uh, yes? Teacher, excuse me. <coughs> eh, I went to the ophthalmology on Saturday, mm -hmm. and he told me that I need a laser surgery and both A's mm -hmm. and he should go for tomorrow morning and so I think we'll not be able to take the class tomorrow okay o sea, this is your last porque, yes porque yes uh, yo fui el sábado y me lo programó para el día de mañana mm -hmm. y me lo tiene que hacer en los dos ojos entonces creo que a lo mejor Quizás no voy a estar en pantalla porque la vista hoy he tenido que poner una, una luz así un poco más tenue, uh -huh. ¿verdad? Por, se lo comento pues porque dice que mañana es el último día. Sí, sí. Okay. No, igual, si no, si no se siente en la disposición, no hay problema. O sea, ya sí. igual, si ya cumplió con la plataforma, you're good to go. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. Okay, yes, well, yes, thank yes. you, anyway. Okay. Uh, yeah, you. so in case we don't see each other tomorrow, it was a pleasure to meet you. Um, Me too, teacher. Thanks so, yeah. to you. Thank you so much. Okay, so uh, for now, guys, that is it. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you for your attention yeah. and participation. See you yes. tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Okay, see ya. Yeah.